Nicholas, please, for five minutes. Well, thank you, Chair. You know, Minister, it's pretty clear what we've heard. You're okay giving fentanyl to kids, kids without parental consent, and you will not rule out the legalization of other drugs like cocaine. Have you read this study uh, from the British Medical Journal talking about mitigation guidance on opioid and stimulant dispensations? Just came out in January? Um, no, I have not read it. Right. It's interesting because my colleague, Mr. Johns, referenced it, and clearly he presented the biased option, which um, sadly misuses the study and doesn't talk about the, the open opioid agonist therapy, which exists inside the study but is not talked about inside the study. We're firm believers on this side of the house that opioid agonist therapy and rehabilitation is the way to go. What we're having a trouble with and what you've clearly failed to see is the difficulties associated with your so-called safe supply that is actually harming people. So the question is, is when will you read this study and when will you take actual science and the criticisms of this paper into account when you're making your policies? Um, Mr. Chair, I'm actually, we do have an expert in the room here on research and evidence and peer-reviewed reports, so I'm going to turn it to Dr. Sam Weiss, if I may, to you answer, Dr. Ellis. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, the, the study that has been referred to uh, from the Brit British Medical Journal, published in January, was funded by the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, and we're very proud of the important work. Um, there's a... Uh, Excuse me, sir. I realize that I asked the minister the question, but get to your point. I guess the question is, I don't care who did it. Do you, have you read it? And do yes, you know the criticisms of that paper? Yes, I have. And, I know and when that are you going to take into the account the criticisms for that paper when you're creating your policy on your so-called safer supply? All right, so I, I don't create policy. I'm a, I'm a researcher. But Thank I you very much. You I don't need an answer from you then. That's, that's very good because the person who's, who's signing off on the policy isn't reading the paper and clearly is not getting good advice. So I'll turn, turn the time over to my colleague, Ms. Goodridge. Uh, thank you. Um, what is your stance, and do you believe that drug users should be able to use drugs in children's playgrounds? We signed an exemption at the request of the BC government, an amendment, my apologies, in September with regards to playgrounds. So you, you don't think that drug users should be allowed to use drugs in children's playgrounds? I believe that in addressing the opioid crisis and the overdose, the level of overdoses that we're seeing that we need to have a clear anchor both in public health and public safety. I'm, I'm asking a really simple question. So yes or no, should drug users be allowed to use drugs in a children's playground? We signed an amendment at the request of the BC government in terms of demarking uh, public use with regards to playgrounds, splash pads, and other public areas. Do you believe that recovery from addiction is possible? I think that everyone's journey is unique and that recovery is possible for those, but it often, in many cases, the evidence shows that it takes more than one try. Do you believe that we should have a recovery-oriented system of care in place in Canada? I believe we need a full suite of services and a continuum of care that includes prevention, harm reduction, treatment. Do you think it should be easier for people that struggle with addiction to access treatment than drugs? I think that an individual who struggles with substance use should have the lowest access barriers to get help and medical services. So do you believe that people that struggle with addiction should have easier access to treatment and supports um, that help them get to treatment than drugs? That they should have the e lowest barrier access to all medical services and supports that can help them with their substance use towards so recovery. So do you believe that we should start restricting the amount of drugs available on the streets so as to reduce the number of new addictions? That would be with regards to enforcement on the illegal toxic drug supply. Is that what you're referencing? Well, I'm, I'm wondering because what we have been seeing is so many stories coming out about the diversion. There are facts and stats coming out about drugs being diverted from safe supply programs getting into the hands of kids. So I'm wondering if you think that we should be far more strict. If you're going to continue allowing drugs to just be flooded into the streets, do you think there should be witness programs? Do you think that there should be spaces so that they cannot just carry those with them and potentially sell them to kids at playgrounds? Um, in my answers to Ms. Atwin earlier, so they are on the record, we talked about the extensive mitigation 
uh, steps that we have taken with those safer supply programs to ensure diversion um, is mitigated as much as possible. As I said, diversion is illegal in this country and continues it's to be still happening. So. Drug use is illegal. It's still happening. It is. And, and I, so my questions are, are very pertinent. And, and frankly, mm -hmm. I don't want to see safe, so-called safe supply at kids' playgrounds. That should, that should never happen, and yet we see it. We see it day and day and day. Anecdotal evidence. I'm rep that, uh, that Sorry, that, that's your time, Ms. Goodrich. Yeah. Go ahead and finish your answer, You've uh, referred Minister. to anecdotal yeah. evidence. What we have done is taken rigorous mitigation measures with safer supply programs, but in addition... Am I at time, Chair? Uh, d d finish your thought, please. What I will say is that when the exemption was put into place at the request of the BC government, BC chiefs of police at that time said that they had every tool available to them and resource to ensure public safety in public spaces. It was at the request of the BC government in September that we signed off on additional amendments, again, at their request. We continue to work collaboratively and comprehensively and assess and monitor the exemption. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And the